Everybody knows what cars bring at auction. You can look it up online. You can see what their final value is. But how do you know what to pay for a car when they look like this? My name's Parker and for the last 10 years I've bought and sold classic cars and they were all projects. And what I'm gonna do is take you with me on my journey so that we can learn together what exactly to pay for project cars. Welcome to Barn Fine Appraisal. On this episode, of Barn Fine Appraisals, we'll go over these two 1970 Chargers that I've recently acquired. This yellow one came out of Leesburg, Virginia, and this blue car actually came about a half mile down the street, and I passed it every day on the way to school on the bus when I was a kid. No, they're not RT cars, but what we'll do is we'll go over the condition of each one, we'll go over the VIN numbers of each one, and we'll go over exactly why they're worth what they're worth in today's market. So the first digit in the VIN number on the yellow car is going to be an X. And for all 70 chargers, that's exactly what's going to happen. X is the first digit. The next number for the next digit in the VIN is going to be a P. And that on this car stands for premium. If it was an S, that would mean that it's actually a special car or an RT package. The 29 stands for a two-door hard, hard top, which all Dodge chargers were. The very next number in a Mopar will actually tell us what's in the engine compartment. And on this car, it's an N, which means that it's a 383 two barrel. The next number is a zero for 1970. And following that is the letter G, which stands for the plant that the car was made. And all 70 chargers have a G in that location. After that is just the sequence number for the car and just tells you when it was made. Now that we've taken a look at the VIN number, we know this car was a 383 car from the factory. Well, let's pop the hood and see exactly what we have underneath here. Well, we can tell that the motor looks correct for the car, but the only way we can really be sure is to run the numbers on the pad right, on the block right here, and that'll tell us exactly what we're working with. The second thing that we want to take a look at on a Dodge Charger is the, going to be the fender tag. Now, this car actually doesn't have one, and that's going to tell us exactly what motor came in it as well, what transmission, what seats it had, did it have a vinyl top, was there stripes on the car, and it will also have the VIN number on here as well. Now this car is pretty complete, and I just want to show you that if you find a Dodge Charger like this, that there is another VIN number that's located right here on the, on the core support, and the one on this car matches the one on the cow, so we know that the car has never really been messed with. The last thing that we're going to do before we go over the condition of these cars is show you where the hidden VIN number is on the rear end of this Dodge Charger. I've got my trusty screwdriver here so we can open up the trunk and I'll show you what's going on. Most people don't know this, but on the trunk lip right here is the last hidden VIN on a Dodge Charger. Now you can barely see it, but it does match the front of this car. The most important thing, other than figuring out like what engine came in the car, is to figure out what condition is the metal in. That means what sheet metal needs to be replaced, what sheet metal doesn't have to be replaced, what parts that you have to buy. Now on a Dodge Charger, being very, very long, they actually, most of them, sat from like here to here, outside of the garage or the pole barn, wherever they were stored, and so most of them rot away from the axle back. And we'll take a look at that between this car and the blue one. Now you can see here that we have some rot here in the quarter panel, but if we actually take a look in the bottom, we can see that the frame rails on this car are pretty, pretty decent. You know, the metal on these Mopars is very thin. And a lot of the times these frame rails are, are not even there. And that's mainly what you want to look for when you're searching for one of these chargers is the structural metal or the integrity of the car is okay. The trunk pan in this car, it's surprising. It's actually here for a charger. Um, they were very thin and they rusted out. But if you can take a look, we can see here that we do have some pinholes in this location, this location, but you can actually replace this whole piece and what we really want to look for is over in this area right here and right here by the inner fender well. We can see that this is pretty good on both sides. Another common spot where these chargers rust out is called the sail panel. And we can see here that this one does have some cancer. You know, this is going to take some time to replace and it does affect the value of the car. The water usually comes down in here 
goes right in between the panel and the window or sits right in here and just begins to rot these cars away. This car was originally a yellow car with a black vinyl top. And we can tell that, one, because of the fender tag that we have, but two, these little poles that are right here along the back of the car, this was for the trim so that the actual vinyl top was separated between the yellow and the black. Now, if it didn't have a vinyl top, this piece right here would have been leaded in and this would be flat. Now that we're inside the yellow 1970 Dodge Charger, we can take a look at the floor or we can take a look right through it. It's pretty rough. However, the metal where you would actually weld to on the inner rockers or on the tunnel here, depending whether you want to replace the whole floor or just the pieces on each side, definitely affect the value of the car. We also notice that there's no seats in this car, there's no dash in this car, and those have significant hits to the car as well. Before we get to the final evaluation or the appraisal of the yellow car, we have to take a look at the blue car and see how the cars differ. The grills on chargers are probably some of the most expensive pieces that you can replace. So the fact that the blue car still has its grill is a huge plus in the value towards its final appraisal. We can see here that the yellow one, that it's completely gone. Now in 1968 and 1969, the Dodge Chargers had vacuum set up for the hideaway headlights, but in 1970, they switched to electric. You can take a look at the first here. We can see here that this car does have its original 318, but the previous owner has switched out the heads to 360 heads for a little bit better performance. We can also take a look that all the pieces for the car are here. They're dated, but you know, you really don't have to go out and find anything else to put this thing together. We can see here that the fender tag on this car is in good shape and it's really not rusty underneath here, which is a good sign overall of the condition of the car when you're trying to evaluate the price. Compared to the yellow car, we can see that the door sills on this car are actually beautiful. We still have some carpet and some seats. And when you go to restore a car, Seats like this can cost you anywhere from four to seven hundred dollars, depending on the condition. And you might still have to get them recovered. This car also has the dash in it. It's got the center console. The steering wheel's not that bad, and the headliner's still there. These are all major factors when figuring out what a car is worth in the market today. Now that we've gone over both cars, VIN numbers, what motors they've had, and the condition, we'll go over exactly which car is worth what. In today's market, I've priced this yellow car at around ten dollars to $14,000. Now, the yellow car actually doesn't have a title, so I think we're at the lower end of that value. It did come from a junkyard about 10 years ago, and so you'd have to spend a little money to get a title, but I think you'd be able to get that money back in the end. The blue car, being a complete car, original motor, complete interior, everything's there, I would appraise that vehicle at about twenty-five dollars to $27,000 in today's market. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you want to see more content like this. Remember, my name is Parker, and this is Barn Fine Appraisals.